Now, a lot of people are going to be very confused on how to solve this math problem. So this is a uh, word problem. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the question. So Dan can dig a hole in 50 minutes. John can do the same job in 40 minutes. How long will it take if they work together? Now, feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. But we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at the answers. So A is 45 minutes, B is 32.7 minutes, C is 22.2 minutes, and D is 16.5 minutes. All right, so one more time, Dan can dig a hole in 50 minutes, John could do the same job in 40 minutes, how long will it take if they work together? Now, before I show you the answer, even if you don't know how to uh, do this, just kind of think logically, right? So in other words, if Dan could do the job in 50 minutes and John can do the same job in 40 minutes, what would be maybe a ballpark, uh, you know, reasonable uh, answer here, right? So take a look at these answers and just take a guess. All right, so the correct uh, solution is C, 22.2 minutes. Now, if you got this right, I'm going to go ahead and give you a happy face and an A++++. All right, this is very impressive if you're able to solve this problem. Matter of fact, if you were a student in my math class, I would just say take the rest of the year off. I don't know how uh, you got so strong in math. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. Now, don't feel uh, too bad if you're like, I'm totally lost on how to solve this problem. What we're talking about here is something called an algebra work word problem. All right now, one answer here that doesn't make sense is 45, right? So if you took the average of these two numbers, 50 and 40, which of course is 45, that doesn't make sense, right? Because if Dan could do this job in 50 minutes and John can do it by himself in 40 minutes, if they work together, it shouldn't take longer than uh, the time John can do by himself, right? So the only reasonable answers here are B, C, and D. And of course, the correct uh, solution is C. All right, so let's go ahead and see how to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. But uh, the first thing we want to do is recognize that we are dealing with a word problem. So read the thing at least three times, okay? Just don't read a problem once and then just start doing stuff. Uh, you, you know, that's like a recipe for disaster. So read it at least three times. Make sure you understand the question. And then we want to kind of model this situation, okay? But here, uh, again, we uh, want to recognize that we are dealing with the concept of work, okay? And uh, not only that, we're dealing with the concept of one person. we got a, a person one over here doing some work, and then person two over here can do this, um, you know, do a job, right? Uh, work to complete a job. This person can do it in this uh, speed, and this person can do it this speed. And by the way, this um, also applies to work problems where there's, let's say, machines involved, okay? One machine can do, you know, uh, produce X amount of widgets and, uh, you know, so uh, at this time or this particular rate, and this machine can do this. So you kind of have to recognize these type of problems. But anyways, uh, how much time will it take them if they work together, okay? Well, again, uh, you have to recognize this as a work problem, and you need to understand a basic formula, okay? So when it comes to algebra work uh, word problems. Uh, this is the basic concept that you want to remember. Okay. All right. So what you're going to have is uh, the following. So let's take uh, two people. Okay. So if person one can do a job in uh, whatever time and person two can do uh, one job in a different time, how much time uh, it will take them working together is going to follow this uh, equation. Okay. This formula. So what you're going to do is going to go one over the time it takes person one to do the job plus one over the time it takes person two uh, to do the job. Now, if there was person three involved, we just had that one over person three, et cetera. And that's going to be equal to one over the, uh, the amount of time it takes them uh, jointly. OK, if they're working together, it's going to follow this formula here, one over how much time it takes them uh, together. OK, so this is the formula that you need to understand. And uh, if you didn't understand this formula, of course, it will be uh, kind of confusing. Because really what we're trying to think about here is that the concept of, of one, okay, this is completing one job, okay? So for ex example, Dan can complete one job 
of uh, digging a hole in X amount of time, okay? And John can complete one job of uh, digging a hole in this amount of time, okay? So you want to think in those terms, and together they will be able to complete one job together in this amount of time. All right, so if you're still confused, well, you, know, you won't be hopefully uh, too much longer because we're going to get into the actual algebra right now. But again, you need to understand the formula. Okay, so here is our problem. And uh, again, we want to kind of pull the specific information so Dan uh, can dig a hole in 50 minutes and John can do the same job in 40 minutes. So uh, we want to figure out, obviously, what um, amount of time it will take them to do this together. So this is an algebra problem, so let's assign a variable x, okay, uh, that will represent the time um, it will take the, them working together as a team. So we'll just kind of delineate this information this way. So Dan can do this job in 50 minutes, John in 40 minutes, and we'll let x equal the time together. Of course, that'll be in uh, units of measure of minutes. And you do have to be mindful of units of measure because let's suppose I said John could do the job here in uh, you know one hour and 10 minutes, right? So if that was the case, you would have to convert this unit of measure uh, to 60 plus another 10 minutes. So this would be 70 minutes. So again, you know, other kind of uh, twists and turns that you could find yourself in uh, problems. But anytime you're dealing with a word problem or a math problem that involves any units of measure, whether that be, you know, minutes, uh, time, distance, it doesn't make a difference. You've got to make sure you're working in the same units of measure. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our little uh, formula here, okay? So 1 over 50 would represent uh, Dan, okay? He can complete one job, all right? Uh, complete that one task in 50 minutes. John can complete that one task in 40 minutes. And together, uh, they can complete that one, text, uh, one uh, task, excuse me, in X amount of minutes. So what we've done here is translated this situation into a lovely algebra equation. Okay, so at this point, really it comes down to, do you have the algebra skills to solve this equation? Uh, by the way, if you are a little bit kind of overwhelmed, you're like, oh boy, this algebra stuff is really, you know, uh, intimidating. You know, don't let algebra intimidate you. There's just a lot to learn, a lot of skills. Uh, I have a huge amount of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Also, if you want my full instruction in algebra, algebra one, algebra two, whatever the case is, I'll leave links to all my main courses in the description below. Okay, but uh, what we're going to do next is have you subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification button. This helps me big time. What it does is grow my classroom, my virtual classroom. I'm trying to pack in as many people that are interested in learning math or uh, maybe are struggling with math. My biggest thing, and I'm really passionate about this, is trying to find people who have you know, math phobia or math anxiety or math doubt, you know, like, oh, can I learn this stuff? You know, uh, I have I've heard uh, through the decades, many, many, you know, too many sad stories on people who said, I gave up my, on my dreams of being an engineer because some uh, math teacher told me I was bad at math or I failed a math class and no one, you know, gave me the encouragement to keep going. Listen, I'm telling you, you can learn math. You can be great at math. What you need is great math instruction, a lot of encouragement, and strong work ethic. you got to be able to put in the work and practice. But if you got all that together, you can go very, very far in mathematics. But anyways, thank you so much. I hope you do subscribe. And now back to the problem. Okay, so here's the equation. We have 1 over, uh, 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40 is equal to 1 over x. We would classify this type of uh, equation as a rational equation. It involves fractions. That word rational means fractions. So uh, how can we solve this equation? Well, there's a few different approaches. I'm going to suggest the easiest approach here is just to find the LCD okay, of the fraction. So we have uh, 50 over 40 equals 1 over x. Now, this is the LCD of these two things here, but I can multiply the equation, everything, um, by uh, whatever I want, okay? When you have an equation, let's say like 2x is equal to 10, I can pretty much multiply both sides of the equation by any number that I want. It's not going to break the equation. But if I multiply the equation by the LCD of these numbers here, 
what's going to end up happening is I'm going to clear these fractions. Okay, so 50 and 40, the lowest common denominator there is uh, 200. So let's go ahead and multiply the uh, entire equation by 200 to just kind of get rid of these fractions. Now, another approach you could have taken is, well, I could just add these fractions up. That's perfectly fine as well, but it kind of, um, you know, uh, just been another route to get to the same destination. Okay, so let's go to do that. So I'm going to take this 200 and I'm going to multiply it by the entire equation, okay, each term in the equation. So 200 times 1 over 50, that's going to be 4, right? So 200 or 200 over 1 is 4, and then 200 uh, times this uh, 1 over 40 is 5, right? So this is, you know, multiplying fractions here. 200 times 1 over 40 is just 200 divided by 40, which is 5. And then 200 times 1 over x is going to be 200 over x, okay? So this is a much simpler uh, equation to work with. Clearly, we can see here we can add these numbers up, 4 and uh, 5. So now let's go ahead and continue on. Okay, so 4 plus 5 is 9. So now our equation is 9 uh, is equal to 200 over x. So we can think of this as a proportion. Okay, two equal fractions. So we'll just put this over 1. And uh, to solve this, very, very easy. All we have to do is use the cross product. So when you have two equal fractions, you can just crisscross like this. Let me just make this super clear. If I have the fraction 1 half and another fraction 5 over 10, these fractions are equal, right? And so what uh, you can uh, do is use the cross product. This is a property of proportions. When you have two equal fractions, you have a, a proportion. So 10 times 1 is 10, and that's going to be equal to 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, so just to be abundantly clear about this, this is the cross product. All right, so x times 9 is 9x. 1 times 200 is 200. And now to solve for x, super easy. All I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 9 and then 200 divided by 9. And feel free to use your calculator. It's going to be approximately 22.2 repeating, but we'll just call it 22.2 uh, minutes, right? Because our units of measure is minutes. And now this makes sense, right? If, uh, if um, Don, okay, is over here. Let's say here's the hole. They've got to dig this hole. Don is like, okay, boy, I can do this in uh, 50 minutes. And John is over here. Well, I could do it in 40 minutes. Okay, let's both, you know, I'll work on this thing. You know, you know, if you take the average, 45 minutes doesn't make sense, right? We're like, well, we should save like half the time. Well, if they're really, you know, by the way, too, what I have to make clear on this as well is these type of problems and I kind of should have uh, emphasized this in the beginning of this uh, video. But uh, when it comes to work problems, when you are working together jointly, it's kind of assumed that one person, um, in other words, they don't get in, in one another's way. Okay, so in other words, you know, uh, uh, Don, for example, is working this section of the hole independently and John's working this section of the hole. But, you know, yeah, 22.2 minutes, you know, they're like, wow, that was great. It's excellent working together as a team. And it brings me back to my good old military days. Uh, together, everyone accomplishes more team, right? Okay, so with all that being said, all right, if you had a difficult time with this problem, you know, most people probably did, okay? These are not, I would, you know, they're common word problems, but, uh, you know, here's a little tip for uh, those of you out there that want to learn algebra or, or taking some sort of math class, okay? What you have to really get down when it comes to algebra word problems is just master the certain uh, kind of um, uh, types of problems. Like a work problem is a certain type. A rate and distance problem is another type of word problem. Mixture problems, that's another type of problem. So if you get these kind of other, and there's other ones, of course, if you get these kind of type of problems down, then when you face these problems, okay, you'll have an awareness of what to do. Okay, okay so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.